What up, guys? It's Dan here, bringing you it, well, it's fir my first tutorial actually. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, this tutorial is going to be about the random effect tracer number 4D, and I actually use it for my newest intro at the minute. So here we go. I'll just show you a preview. And as you can see, what it basically is is all the text flying in randomly, and as the can camera comes across, my YouTube link comes in at the bottom. So let's get started. Go to File, New, and then straight away go to Render Settings, which is this button right here. Go to Width, 1280, then by 720. Okay, that'll do for the minute. Go to MoGraph, Text Object. Straight away, what I'm going to do is whack the depth up to 100. And text Daniel. Simply because it's my name, well, my YouTube name. And then the font, I'm going to use Ethnocentric, which is what I use in my um, intro. Okay, so as you can see, if you at the minute, if I just go onto one of the letters quite closely. As you can see, it doesn't look very nice because all the um, like faces of the shape uh, of the letter are really sharp and stuff. As you can see, if I just render out, it's, it just doesn't look very nice. So if I go down to caps and then fillet cap, and fillet cap again, as you see now, it's just so much nicer with the beveled edge and stuff. So now, where it says fillet type, go to one step, and it, if I just render out again. I'd say it just it just looks like it's two parts to the um um to the letter and I think it just looks really nice. So yeah. I just think that looks nice. Okay. So if we just zoom out now. And go okay, all lined up. Yeah. That's look, that's looking quite nice at the minute. And then make sure all your text is about correct because once you've done this, there's no going back. Okay, so once you select the text and then hit C on the keyboard. What this does it makes it an editable object. And then go down to there. Just keep on hitting the plus icons, and as you can see, here's your text with the extrude nerves. Just select your first letter, and then hold Shift and select the last letter. Drag and drop this out of the group. So with the arrow pointed left next to your cursor, select the text object and just press delete. So now you've just left with the letters. Okay. Go to MoGraph and then Fracture Object. Drag and drop all of your letters into that by holding Shift and selecting them all. Make it a child. How do I know it's a child? Well, what you how you know it's a child is by when your cursor's on it, there'll be a down arrow pointing down. That means it's a child. If it's pointing left, that just means it will do nothing pretty much. Just make it go down. Okay, right, and it'll turn grey, but that doesn't matter for the minute because we'll be, we'll be making a material in a minute. So select E. Well, my, E is my last letter. So select your last letter and then hold Shift and select Fracture Object. So this selects everything at the minute. Then click MoGraph and go down to Random Effector. As you can see at the minute, all your text goes like, well, a little random, we could say. You can see some of the letters at different heights, but that's nothing. Okay, so this is basically where it gets fun. Make sure you select your random effector, go to parameter, and then just start messing around with the levels, really. You can have it however you like. I'm just going to do it quite quickly here for this example. And as you can see, you can select scale and uniform scale, but what that does is makes some letters bigger and some letters smaller. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to deselect that and I'm going to hit rotation. This is really fun, I find, but it just makes it look even more crazy and stuff. As you can see, they're all flipped everywhere. It just makes it look more random when they're flying in, I suppose. And then um, just get them as out of the camera as much as you want. And then go. Then once you're happy with where it is, if you go onto the effector tab, and then as you can see where strength is, at the minute you're a hundred percent. If you move down that, that'll take it back to normal. 
I actually quite like that how it just all looks like it's f doing like 360s and stuff but anyway now what we're going to do is add keyframes so it comes in at the beginning and then slowly comes into that okay so make sure your time lies at zero keyframes and the strength is on 100 and then next to strength is like this little circle hold control on that and then click as you can see the circle will go red and then what you want to do with that once it's gone red take it up to 90 keyframes and, there's, and then drag it down to zero as you can see now it's gone yellow hold control and then click and it'll go red again now if you just play it'll all, you can see it will fly in but what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make the timeline a bit bigger put it to about 130 stretch the timeline out okay so now before I do anything else I'll make a material and then well, how you do this is by double clicking or just go to file new material and double click on it make sure colors selected and then set your color for this I'm gonna use a I use a blue yeah I use a blue okay then go to flex, reflection then texture for now put it down to about 20% on brightness and mix strength okay that'll do and that pretty much it X out of that and drag and drop that onto fracture object okay that's looking pretty nice at the minute what we're going to do next is go where this button is with the four arrows hold down your left click and hit floor bring that to the middle of your writing and for some of you that might not fit so go under coordinates go on the x-axis and just whack that right up I'm going to do it for the y as well okay so now what you do is go to the rotation button come up this. hold shift on the red one and that will make it go up in 5 so it's more accurate go to 90 degrees and then go back to this and then move it back so you see there it's like 2D so move it back so you've got all your writing in that'll do so now what we're going to do is add a light which is this button here just click once and then a light will appear take it to the middle of your writing and then just move it to the position that you want I'm going to do it in the centre and back that'll do as you see now I'll just go back to my text and see what that looks like ok let's have a look as you can see like there's some really nice shadows going on yeah, on the top of the writing it just looks really light and stuff which I think makes it look really nice but it's up to you however whatever floats your boat you know okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a camera okay and so once again hold this button here where we got the light from get to camera and as you can see at the minute it's a next to camera it's like a black square and um, what that means is it means that you're not the camera so as you can see there's the camera there and all them lines is what the camera can see but when you select that black square it will turn white and that means that you are the camera and whatever's in this light bit here is what the camera can see the, the, them grey bits here like, at each side that you can't the camera can't see that so once you're there go up to zero keyframes then put the camera wherever you like for me I'm going to put it about so it's facing there and then move over and back out a bit somewhere about there and then down here hit the keyframe button and then oh no, oh, then go to 90 frames where the text should end and then I'm going to have it ending up about here zoom out a bit 
Oh god, what happened there? Oh, let me just do that again. Okay. So, move the camera over. Yeah, I'll have it about there. Let's hit the keyframe button again. And take it all the way up to the last frame, which for me is 130. And I'm going to just rotate it again so I can see the whole text now. As it has all just came in. Okay, so about there, that's looking quite nice. So then just hit the keyframe button again. Now, as you can see, it all just goes flying in. So for me, between 90 to 30 frames is when my YouTube link would come in with my name and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty. M oh, and then this. What we've just got to do is um. I'll just go over some render settings again. So it's this button here. And then make sure you go to on to frame range, all frames. So that's zero to hundred and thirty in my case. Then go save, and then file where the three dots are. Save save where you want it to be. I'm gonna save it to the desktop and name it Tut. Just for this example. And same it a format, go down to QuickTime Movie. That looks alright there. Multi pass, nothing there. Anti aliasing aliasing or something. Where where it says geometry, well, first of all, this pretty much just means about the shadows and stuff. So I'm gonna to go down to geometry and then go best. Instead of minimum well, keep minimal level as one by one, max level two by two. This will increase render time, but it, if it's just a picture, I'd say Maybe go 4x4 four four if you've got a lot of shadows, but because it's a render of a movie or an animation, even it's going to take quite a while. So I'll say just go down to 2x2. Two two. And um, yeah, it looks like you're ready to go. Okay, so whenever you're ready to render, just hit this button here and then it'll pop up. And then, yeah, you're away. So don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to make sure you see all my latest videos so thanks for watching see you later